Give peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today in my house is a sad day. Because today our annual passes to Walt Disney World and Disneyland expire. And if I had wanted to take one more Sunday, which meant I would not be able to take a Sunday at Christmas time for my family, who needs family, we would still be there because our passes are good still for one more day. Over the past 365 days, we have used that pass 38 times to enter a Disney park. That's my count. My wife's count, by the way, is 45 days because she took a trip without me because I had to work because it was Holy Week and Easter. Like those days are important or something <laughs> in the church. So 38 times, that doesn't mean the amount, we've used it a lot more because like on July 4th, we went to all four parks at Walt Disney World in one day. Um, we used it a lot more than that, plus all the times I pulled it out to get discounts on Star Wars merchandise and food and hotel rooms. We have used it. We figured out at least my pass, based on the cost, was our per ticket daily average was $22. So our, our mission over that time ended up being $22 a day, the 38 days that I used it. So it's a sad day in our household. Now people ask me all the time, why do you go to Disney so much? Well, one of the reasons was, of course, because we paid to go to Disney a year ago in the past, so we're going to use it, of course. The more we use it, the more value. But a lot of the reason for me, it's not about the rides or the food, but I tell you what, the food is a big plus. Um, is the way in which when you enter into a Disney park, you get immersed in a story. See, the moment you approach, the moment you get off a bus or a monorail or a car at Disney, they are putting you in a story from the moment you get out of that vehicle. The entire park is designed for that sole purpose. And when I mean design, I really mean design. The architecture, the landscaping, even the pavement has a purpose and a reason. And that reason is to make you feel like not only that you are witnessing a story, but you are an active participant in that story. My favorite example of this happens to be in Liberty Square, and Paul's going to like this when I get done, so you can laugh when I'm done. And that's a joke in here, and I still know what I mean. In Liberty Square at um, the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World, it's, so you're supposed to be entering into Revolutionary War Time America. And they point this out in many ways besides symbolism and, and architecture. See, like, like there's details, like on the windows, the windowsills are held up by leather straps because in New England, they took all the metal hinges off and melted them down for musket balls. And so to be able to close their windows, they put leather straps. Yeah, but my favorite feature happens in the pavement because there is red pavement here, which is the standard Walt Disney World pavement, and there is red pavement over here. But flowing through the center, kind of going around like our path does up there, is something that looks just like our path up there. It's kind of that pebbly, it's light brownish pebbly, and it just flows through the center, kind of meanders. That is supposed to represent the latrine that every American town had in the center of their streets in Revolutionary War America, where you would take your human waste and your garbage and throw it down the middle of the street. We call it the River of Poo. <laughs> and when we're in the Magic Kingdom and we're in the Liberty Square, we look down and go, oh, we're in the River of Poo. That's intentional, right? It's, it's small, but when you learn that detail, you never forget it, and it makes you be more a part of this story. And that's one of the things I love about Disney, is being part of the story, is you are active part. And the same is actually true for baptism. Say we're blessed to baptize Dominic this morning. And when we baptize Dominic, and when you were baptized, <coughs> is an invitation to enter into God's story. Of course, other things are going on too. Dominic's going to receive the forgiveness of sins. He's going to be blessed with the Holy Spirit. He's going to hear of the promises of Christ for him. 
But most especially, he's going to be invited to be a part of God's story in the world as a child of God. Just as you are. Now the thing is, we sometimes think of baptism as just that day when water is poured over our heads. My baptism anniversary, by the way, was four days ago, July 27th, 1926, was I was baptized. I'd been home from the hospital at approximately three hours before I was baptized. Because I had to be in the hospital for a month after I was born. So we tend to sometimes think of that as just one day. But baptism is, is actually, baptism is actually every day. Every day God invites us through baptism to be part of God's story. Every day our sinful self dies and a new self rises through the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. And because of that, every day we are entered, we are invited to be part of what God is doing in the world. To show the love of God to our neighbors and to strangers. To practice forgiveness as we have been forgiven. To show the joy and blessing of creation and what we've received. And to share that blessing with others. But most especially to know that God walks with us in the midst of our own personal stories. And finally to share the story of how God so loved the world that he gave it Jesus Christ. So that whoever may not perish, but have eternal life. That all who believe in Christ are saved. We are part of that story. And baptism reminds us that every single day that we are marked as children of God. And that we can share not only the story of Christ, but the story of God's love for humanity and God's willingness to forgive humanity. We see that in Job as Job realizes that he has things that he does not know. And he asks for God's forgiveness. And he sees the beauty and wideness of God's creation. We see it in the story of the blind beggar. Where Jesus heals that beggar because of his faith. Allows him to see with new eyes. Because we are children of God in baptism, we see with new eyes. We see the world differently. Because we see the love and grace of God in all things. And we're invited and called to be a part of that through baptism. It's not just a one-day event. It's an everyday immersion into the waters of God's love for us. And just as Disney parks immerse me in their stories, every day, every day we are immersed in God's story through the love of Christ and waters of baptism. That will be true for Dominic from today until the end of his life, and that is true for all of you from the day that you were baptized until the day in which you rejoined God in his glory the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Be part of God's story. And remember that you are baptized and loved children of God. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like you to please rise and turn to 8.36, please.